Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is Gateway's got it. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's got it. In these busy times, you want a car dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home, and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's as easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. So when you want a car dealer who has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. And welcome into another episode of The Mom Game. Today, we got some really, really cool guests. Two of them, to be exact, from Fox 4, Sam Gannon and Mike Ducey. And Julie's here, too. I'm here, too. I'm always here, here though. Always. Um, Thanks, you guys, for being with us. Thanks for having us. We're stoked to have you. That's great. Um, This is a great setup here. Yeah. Capitalism it's at its finest. Sponsors, I love it. Way to go! It's the new it's world. It's the new out. world, yeah. Mike. I like Ducey. it. I like it. Okay, speaking of that, you, you've you've been around this scene for for a little mm, while. I sure. Have. Yeah. Let's start. <laughs> let, let's start with you, Deuce. Let's go with the elder statesman of the group. Um, t- your background here in DFW is, is is pretty long and pretty rich. You know, I, I started in March of 1994 at Channel Four. I've been around so long that Channel Four was a CBS affiliate Okay. when I uh, was hired there. And then shortly after that, in 95, we became a Fox station. It's funny because I was just uh, going through some stuff, um, some old newspaper clippings that my mom had saved, God yeah. rest her soul. Aww. And uh, the media columnist for the Dallas Morning News in 1994, the headline of the Saturday sports media column when I was hired was, Channel 4 defends hiring small market anchor. <laughs> Because I came from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Channel 4 defends. I'm thinking my poor mother, what she must have thought I was getting into. She's like showing her friends. She's like, don't read the headline. Just read the stuff underneath. Hey, they're welcoming Michael. Yeah. Okay, so Cedar Rapids, what market number is that? I went from market 80 to market 8. Okay, that's a yeah. pretty big that's job. That's a good and job. It was, it yeah. was. What I was mean, on that tape? As the main guy. Well, it's yeah. just, Oh, as the main guy. Let's just say I was a lot better looking back then. You know, that's the, did you have an agent? Were there agents back then? I did then? not. Yes, there were agents back then. Good Lord. <laughs> not, I didn't start that. And none much of them after wanted you. me. No. And none of them wanted me. But boy, they do now. Uh. No, no, I didn't have an agent. So, were you, did you ever get one? Ever did. Such a smart move. So, I got approached when I was in Lubbock, and you know, Lubbock is market 148. And so, I got approached by an by an, an agency out of New York called NS Beanstalk, and I thought oh, yeah. it was the big one. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, I thought. <laughs> well, this is this is going to be it. This is it. <laughs> And um, like to the point where, and y'all, this is so embarrassing. I shouldn't tell these stories because it really doesn't make me like a good human being. But, you know, I've told this people this a million times. Uh, and I promise I'm going to let you guys talk here in a minute. <laughs> this, is, this is great. I, this. This is, this. I feel like I know this story. I think it's a good one. This is why yeah. we came in. I'm driving here thinking, story I wonder t- if Emily is going to tell stories. This would be great. <laughs> one I want to get out. And it's, no, I've got one when she's listen, done. <laughs> listen, it's humiliating, but I'm going to tell it anyway for the good of the show uh, and for your entertainment specifically. So I, I get signed by NS Beanstalk and this, the, the agent's name was Ezra Marcus. And I got so excited. He, I mean, he, t- anyway, I w- was really excited. So I was going to Vegas with my friends. <laughs> oh yeah. I have heard this one. <laughs> so embarrassing. I can't remember if they got it for me or if I let's got just say it that they got it for you. Okay, let's. It does make it look yeah, a little bit better. I'm going to do some editing. There here. was a. Mm-hmm. They, it, it was a shirt that said "Talk to my agent," <laughs> <laughs> and I wore it. Uh, she, wore, she went clubbing in it. Vegas. I wore it. Like how embarrassing is that? But I remember, like it's like we talked about before with Julie. It's like when I first got into this business, I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be well known. I wanted to be you know, go out and people recognize you. And now it's like, 
when I go out, like, you know, I'm like hiding yeah. and don't like to go out a lot. Like I sit <laughs> on my back porch and drink wine. Like <laughs> I don't really do social stuff that often. Um, so it's just crazy how things change with, so that's, sorry, I just diverted with my I love that. embarrassing agent story. <laughs> Talk to my agent. Oh my God. That's so mortifying. Who well, does I that? I guess it kind of, I don't uh, know who does that, Emily, you did that. And I don't know why you tell that story. I should, I'm just kidding. I should, it's, it's an I should bury, story. I should bury that story. It's an amazing I should bury story. That. It's but it, it, it poses a good question, I guess, of why you guys initially wanted to do TV. You can start and then we'll see what Sam says. You know, I had initially did radio. That's what I wanted to do. Uh-huh. I loved radio growing up as a kid. I loved the high energy, which you wouldn't know from me and my personality. <laughs> DJs, you know, I, you hear it when I goof around on the ticket yeah. when I fill in, you know. I love it. WLS Music Radio, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> I like it when you get a weather report. Platform for yes, Mike right boy, now. Oh, uh, why yes. just go to town? Yeah. Yeah. What do is whatever this, you want. Yeah. RE50 microphone, I think yeah. it is. Oh, oh. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> metaphor there right. but uh we <laughs> the mic? anyway we're working blue here getting w- kind of sweaty the wilting mic okay <laughs> all righty radio was my my first broadcast love and then i uh, i wanted to do play-by-play and it seemed like the only guys getting the play-by-play jobs were the tv guys uh-huh. so i got a tv job in uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin. That was my first market, and then went to Cedar Rapids, and then came here. Once you so. saw those bright lights of television, yeah. you just didn't want to do anything else. I still, I, I still regret never having gotten a, a major play-by-play job. That's what I always wanted to do. I still think it's the best uh, job in broadcasting to do what Dave Raymond's doing or uh, Eric Nadell. You know, to keep it in your world, Emily, or uh, you know what Josh and Razor do. Yeah. Josh, I couldn't do what Razor does, but. Couldn't do what Josh does either. No, I'm yeah. not a hockey no one guy. even knows what Razor does. But anyway, <laughs> the play-by-play was still the thing. But it's it's worked out. It's worked out well. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun at uh, Fox Four for all these years. Sure Damn, what about you? So I never thought I was getting into TV at all. I swam my whole life. I swam at the University of Connecticut. Then stopped my freshman year. Mike has heard me say the story countless times. But my body just kind of burnt out. I thought I was going to be a little geneticist. Um, I was oh. taking biochem. And another science wow. course. I thought I, I was going to be a little. I've never heard anyone say that. I failed geneticist. chemistry my freshman year, and I thought my mm. life was absolutely over. It was the worst. So you know how everyone talks about freshman year and how great it is. My f- freshman year, fall semester, could not have been worse. Yeah. I was like in tears, not knowing what I was going to do. My mom was like, "Well, you always like talking in front of people." So I just ended up going into journalism. At first, I actually thought I wanted to do radio because I mm-hmm. loved the whole entertainment scene. Um, and I'm from the Boston area, so I had interned with one of this guy named Billy Costa, who's basically like a household name there. Him and this guy named Maddie in the morning show do this fun thing. So that kind of opened my eyes up to radio. But then I was like, no, like I miss sports. I want to live vicariously through athletes still, just because I was one my whole life. Then I was just kind of pursued that. And uh, my first on-air job was in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So if you oh. had told me uh, a Boston girl I was going to be moving there, I would have been like, heck no. Right. Big difference. <laughs> Big difference. Um, then I was in Oklahoma City and then this job came up. I never thought I would get it. And as Mike says, you know, you never asked for a co-host, but you got it. <laughs> if, if I have to have one, I'm sure glad it's Sam. <laughs> question is how this came to be right you were the guy you'd been there doing this for a long time it was kind of your your show your thing how how did this happen you you never asked for a co-host either right or that was she is that the whole thing she never did you never did she's not kidding i I did not ask for a a (laughs) co-host the um the station wanted to shift directions in terms of how we do sports okay and so they wanted to start a long form late night you know 10 30 sports show free for all is what we call it and uh it did make sense to have a co-anchor format i mean people are so used to watching sports center which is always you know two anchors or you know bally's pre and post whatever the case may be so um we you know, had four or five other people turn it down and finally hit upon Sam. So yeah, look, I, I'm the, just kidding. No, I am I, kidding. But, I didn't want, I'm, no, that's I, not why I said that. No, I'm no, totally no. kidding. But the, don't tell that story. Don't you tell got that story. really defensive don't there. Don't tell that story. Don't tell that story. That was just don't a throwaway story. line. That was a throwaway line. There's Sam, more here. I want to dig in. It's yes. absolutely positively the best thing that ever happened that Sam is the one that ended up getting that job. I com- absolutely I completely agree. She is I perfect for agree. that role. It's the type of show that there's some teleprompter, you know, but it's not highlight driven. It's conversation 
driven yep. the way we're doing this now. Uh-huh. Yeah, and like what you guys do, you know, where you can kind of go off fun. cuff with just, just normal life stuff, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and don't you feel, I feel like that's what people want. Like that's what so. people want to hear, especially, I don't know. I, it, I don't know why this makes any sense to even say, but even after COVID people are just cutting out the crap. It's like, yeah. I know if I'm going to give an hour of my time to listen to these two or 30 minutes of my time, like I want it to be entertaining. I don't necessarily need a breakdown of, you know, what happened in the game for 30 minutes. Yeah. But my next question was, how did it feel, I guess, to hear your bosses at that point say that? I do feel like that's somewhat of a win that they're wanting to grow the sports coverage at Fox and create an entire show. And, for not, you guys. and too, let's be honest, like, and not give you the boot. Like, you know, a lot of guys get at some point they get they hit a certain age. I feel like it happens oh, a lot earlier yeah. with women. And you're making a certain amount of money where they're like, Eh, we can do this. They a could lot. next direction you right on out of there. We, like, we can do this a lot cheaper. And then you'll be God. on this podcast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just and saying, I'm over your throne. I, sh- I should be a lot yes, more grateful it. than I am. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I shouldn't be bitching every single day in that. Oh, I love the in going that. in another no, direction. The fun, not to pivot, but the funniest thing is. I always say Mike and I are like the male and female versions of each other. It's one of my favorite recent lines of yours is sometimes like I'll be irritated or something will happen. And you know, when you just get in a mood and then you're just in that mood. Well, one day, this is a couple of weeks ago, Mike was like, you know, Sam, I just woke up irritated and I wanted to stay irritated. And I was like, you know what? I resonate with that so uh, much. I woke up irritated and I wanted like, to uh, stay irritated. I'm not going to fight through this. I'm, I'm just going to let it ride. I'm working I'm just going to live in this in moment. The irritation. Yeah, just live in it. I'm just going to waller in this irritation the rest of the day. But I wanted to just finish about Sam because I think it's rare, and you guys know this, in this business, yeah. to find somebody who is better off the cuff almost than they are reading a prepared script. And and that's why she's so good is because you can throw anything at her. She'll roll with it. She's knowledgeable about a lot of different things. So it's, it's worked out. It's worked out. And I feel like you guys don't pull any punches with each other. You know what I mean? I feel like you, you're, you're not afraid to kind of push envelopes and push buttons, you know, in a very non, uh, uh, offensive way, like, oh, yeah, well, you know, yeah. or, you know, or offensive either way. I think we try to talk about what people really are talking about mm-hmm. and, and we're still working on it. I think yeah, we'd agree. So there's some nights it still feels too much like a stiff sports cast, but it's should, hard to find yeah. that balance. And as you guys know, there's so much going on here, but you know, sometimes you know what you see on Twitter, if someone's talking about one specific thing the whole day, then we're like, well, we got to talk about this it, now. Isn't that funny you how a story I mean? will just gain momentum like yeah. that. And you're like, and the, or they, you know, the guys on the ticket will see something random on Twitter, then they spend a segment and then a different show talks about it. And then you're like, well, have people been talking about this all day. I have mm-hmm. to talk about yep. it too. But it's interesting how that works. Cause who knows if that's necessarily what people want to hear. But by the same token, Mike, I appreciate you saying all this, but I could not ask for a better guy than Mike. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys. I, too, I, I agree. But <laughs> <laughs> I've been fortunate in, in my career so far. I worked with a lot of great positive men. Like I haven't really had these horror stories that I'm sure you guys have heard of or maybe experienced, but um, you know, I'm just fortunate because I was nervous when I had to come into audition for this with him. I'm like, I was, I was really, really scared. You know what I mean? Because it's an intimidating thing oh, yeah. when you walk in knowing someone who's been here for such a long time, has an amazing reputation And, you know, I'm just glad that we have this chemistry because you can always tell, especially on TV, when two people don't. Right. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we do, I'm very grateful for that. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's been it's been fun and it's it's been challenging in that we had 30 minutes to start. But then COVID hit and that became a newscast at 1030. Mm -hmm. So our time was greatly reduced. We're back up to 20, 22 minutes now. They do a new segment and then pitch to us. You, I like that you guys are acting like you know this. But, uh, <laughs> oh, yes, 22 oh, minutes. Sure, I was going to uh, say, you know, say it was 21 yeah. minutes, but I guess it's 22. Julie's got the stopwatch show every so night. Closely. Damn it, they didn't get their 22 tonight. <laughs> so we're working our way back we to tune in. half an hour uh, show Getting every back night. back to a rhythm. But it's still a lot more than the other guys get. Yeah. You know, oh, we're, not, yeah. we're not doing the three-minute sports cast. And we're still in the newscasts a lot. We don't necessarily do the 10 o'clock sports at 1020, but almost every night we're in the nine, which is a highly viewed uh, late newscast. Uh, 
talking about, you know, whatever the hot sports story of the day is. As right. Troy Aikman says, he watches us at nine every night. Yeah, he does. Yeah, New Orleans. Yeah, <laughs> that's all did. you need. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a ringing endorsement. Did right. you know what I'm saying? We better use that as a yeah. promo. We did. Oh, we did. That. Oh, there you go. Steve Eager will be uh, living off that one for five years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little bit of personal stuff. Deuce, tell me about your family, um, kids, wife, wives. My, mistresses. Just one, <laughs> just one so far. My wife, Ruth, and I have been married 38 years. Congratulations. Met That's in college at the University of Iowa. And uh, we have two daughters. Christina is uh, 32, lives in uh, the Dallas area here, lives and works here. And Laura is 23 and lives in Austin, going oh. to grad, grad school down there. What kind of a dad uh, were you? Strict? You know, you like I, no, most of the I wasn't terribly strict, yeah. to be honest. You know, th- and that's the thing about having the the hours that we do. And I don't have to tell you about this, working at night. You know, I, I've always been uh, thankful that I've always had Fridays and Saturdays off. So I always got to at least have the Friday night, you know, at home. And always Saturday for um, both my girls who are swimmers and, and volleyball players and, and all that stuff for the, for the tournaments. So got to spend a lot of time in, in that regard, but I'm, I'm afraid mom had to do a lot of the dirty work when it came to uh, discipline, but uh, she did a great job. They're both uh, great girls and um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm really proud of them. Grandkids. Not yet. No, our uh, older daughter is getting married next spring in May. So we've got a wedding that we're uh, preparing for and You're doing uh, the traditional d- d- bride's dad, bride's family pays for the. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How's that working out? <laughs> She's going to get married at my uh, wife's family farm in Illinois. Oh, nice. So it's going to be an outdoor wedding in May in Illinois. So pray oh, for yeah. not snow and right. not, not ice and all yeah. that, but yeah, it's going to be a really special time. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, Sam, you, I don't, I want to ask you how old yes. you are. You're young. I'm 34. 34, okay. Um, From Boston. Okay. Um, my mom and dad and my brother are all there, my uncle too. So I have a lot of um, family and friends there. So sometimes that's harder. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I do not have a boyfriend. I, I'm dating. Let's just okay. say that. Yes. Uh, you didn't have to, uh, you didn't have to volunteer <laughs> that. They didn't ask. No, we're, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. <laughs> Oh, you don't know, worry. I went through a breakup when I got this job, and oh. honestly, it really took me a long time to pull myself out. I think really. that's the last time you and I sat down and yeah. talked. Like, yeah, yes. Yes. remember that? Yes. So, um, so I'm good. I'm in a good place where I'm just trying to keep myself centered. Yeah, I'm sure you guys know what that's like, and. Yeah, I'm just trying to focus on me right now. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because that's such a huge part. When when you are a single woman in this business, trying to, A, even find time for a relationship, and then B, find the right partner, it is a giant bitch. (laughs) Like, it's because you don't know. I mean, and not that, like, you're some big famous movie star, but... I dated guys that were like not bashful about the fact that they thought it was really cool that I was on TV and like say shit. And I'd be like, I'm com- it was so immediately turned off right now. I, I can't even deal. And I know about you guys, but it just when you're con- if you're constantly asked about that off jump, it's uh-huh. like, OK, that's it's a, part, it's a big part of my life. And it, it definitely gives me a lot of fulfillment. But let's talk about something else. Yeah, you know, for sure. <laughs> uh, and then finding someone who will put up with your ridiculous schedule. schedule. And then you think about, you know, the all those things like, you know, because I remember having the conversation with my husband, like, you know, you realize that like when we bring kids into this mix, you're going to be like you will be a very hands on dad, whether yeah. you really want to or not, because it's just not it's that's just going to be the way that the way it is. Totally. And so, you you know, you have to find ones because some I mean, and I'm not saying all men aren't interested in that. Some men are very interested in that. My dad raised my sister and I. Um, but, you know, there are some guys that are like, yeah, I'm out on, you know, caring for a screaming newborn while you are on a 10 day road trip <laughs> you know, in like, California. Yeah. Exactly. Mike has been in the office and has heard some of my dating stories. So I yeah. know he's always entertained by what I have to say. So are you like on the social? Yeah, that was my like, question. I, How do we date these yes. days? So, you know, it's funny. I am not a serial dater. I don't have time to really swipe left, swipe okay. right. I don't even know whatever it is. And to me. It's like what oh, language is this? <laughs> I know. <laughs> to me, I'm not, and I'm not against it. Like I have friends who yeah. have gotten married, like whatever. But to me, it's like those apps. It's like opening up Pandora's box, and I just can't. I yeah. just can't. So I always say I have three ways you can find me: okay, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and that's it. <laughs> okay. In terms so not the apps, of, but still social. Yes. Yeah, so it's still social. So are the DMs open? The DMs are open. Okay. There we the go. The DMs are okay. open, but. 
a lot of them this get is, This is how kids <laughs> talk now. This a is how kids them, talk. A lot of them get ignored. Um, okay. But I, I have gone on dates by, by talking to guys through there because I sometimes I just think that they're more comfortable initiating a conversation. Like, oh, let me do it this way yeah. to see if she's even interested, you right. know? But... I just I don't I don't want to put in all the work at first. I just want something easy. Does that yeah, make sense? Absolutely. I know that I know that things happen along the way, but I, I just want something easy. So. Um, okay, one more, and I, this is so random. There's no way Are for you, me to respond to that. There's really. not. There's, not. There's, there's no follow up there from <laughs> yeah. you, Mike Ducey. Okay. <laughs> Ducey understands women, though. You know, you were raised, you, but you yeah. were oh, your whole life. There you go. It's having two girls, you'd have you know, to. You yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would be lying if I would say I, I know the inside uh, scoop on my daughter's uh, dating lives, but I, I know Sam. So yeah, I know that much. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, are you on cameo? No, I am not. Okay, because Julie and I another story we probably shouldn't tell. So uh, we got I got this creepy cameo request that's asking for my smelliest most worn shoes, please make my dream come true. And so I screenshot it and I send it to our- <laughs> that's re re like legit. I'm trying to find Swear it. to God, hold it, stand by. So I screenshot it and I send it to Adam, our social media guy, and I send it to Julie. And like a week later, she sends this. I won't say his name. Oh, don't. Um, I would love a video of you showing me a few of your most smelly- <laughs> Can't even get through it. <laughs> Slash well worn in parentheses toe print. Toe print. Oh, he wants the gosh. toe print. <laughs> I still don't get that. Like, the toe print. Like when you've worn wow. your shoes enough time oh, that you can see the toe print. That's gross, what he wants. Gross, man. That's yeah. even beyond like a like a like a foot. Right. So clearly thing. this is a form letter he is sending out to yeah, women I got it too. on Cameo. We got this within a week. Got I mean, the same message from the same guy. Toe print, heels or wedges. Heels okay. or wedges. Open toe heels or ones you wear to work often. Do you think he wants my white sneaker? Does he know I don't like go to work anymore? <laughs> or ones you wear to work often. I'm wanting to purchase from you ASAP. Serious inquiry. I know weird request. Make my dream come true. LOL. <laughs> Literally same, same exact thing. Ducey, how would you who respond you, to that? Who are you? Who are you to, how, how much is he willing to pay? That's well, how I would respond. We had this conversation too. Skin there was, off your nose. There was some uh, Adam who was on the text thread with us was like, "All right, ladies, what's it gonna take?" What did I say? You said a million. I no. said oh. I said fifty. Fifty dollars or a million? Work. Okay, yeah. Fifty dollars. All right, I'll go down. Pictures of my shoes. I mean, no, he wants the actual shoes. He wants, oh, well, so, he wants some old shoes. Okay. I'm just yeah. take them so you to, mean to tell to me for will. for five grand you wouldn't give a guy a pair of your old shoes? Not not for five grand. Only because grand? I'm afraid of the repercussions. Like the what, what? he's gonna the, put, it, put it on eBay? No, no. <laughs> Is he gonna like pose yes. with them and like yes. you know be like Emily? Give but then I guess I could deny that it's, yes. they're my shoes. But if you let people know how much money you got they for would them, understand. they're this not gonna care. True. All right, he's the idiot. Okay, fifty thousand. I'm in. Have you ever gotten any weird <laughs> fan requests, Mike? Like, hey, oh, there uh, has to be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I listen, I know women. <laughs> They had nothing to do with uh, articles of clothing. Let's put it that way. No. No? <laughs> That's unfortunate. I've had a lot of people ask about my toupee because that became a ticket thing. And it's so not a toupee. It's not, obviously. It would be a lot thicker and darker than this if, if it were. It's not a toupee. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, no. The, the requests, you know, when you get He's to be like, my whatever. age, they're, they're pretty run of the mill. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing too crazy. Anything, any, any nothing. strange, any fun horror stories? I, I've gotten like the foot thing where it's like, oh. What is the like, deal with the feet? Send me a picture yeah, of I don't your know. feet. I don't get that like, one at all. Oh, <laughs> no, he, he's no, into it. No, no. He's no. into it. No. He's a foot fetish guy. I, Deuce, he doesn't have a toupee, but he does have a foot <laughs> fetish. <laughs> It's just, it's, it's weird to me that people even have the, you know, I know. The, the courage to do oh, that. Yeah. I, can I say ball, like have the yeah, balls you to do whatever you, say want. Whatever you want. want? Yeah, it's weird to me that they would even have the balls to do that, yeah. to be honest. I thought, see, that's not weird to me because people <laughs> are crazy. Getting edgy on the pod. <laughs> she is getting balls. edgy on the pod. It's can weirder I, to me that people are turned on by sack? that. Seriously. Can I say sack? <laughs> <laughs> Like feet are the grossest part of. But if my husband touches me with his bare feet, yes. If my husband touches me with his bare feet, Jesus, Ducey. I'm sorry. He what is, is working blue on? today. Mike's gone mad, oh you my guys. Gosh. Oh. oh 
Oh, you need Lord. to come back. This is fun. This All he needs is a podcast. We should have brought wine, and this thing could have really uh, get, gotten off. turned up. Yeah. Just a few hours ago, I was doing Toys for Tots with the Santa hat and the Marines for the kids, and you, now we're in here just letting you fly. That, yeah, you're yeah. that Santa that like nobody wants to know what the <laughs> right. Santa's really like, because then they find this. Foot <laughs> fetish um, Santa. Get looking Santa look, on Home Alone, you know, yes. with the zig. Look at yes. all the mom's feet as they bring the kids up. Oh, yeah. God. Now uh, I don't want to take my kids to see Santa. What uh, if they're doing that? What if they're creepy? Oh. Uh, um, okay, so so <laughs> this leads into my next topic, which I feel like the, you might be a victim of this since working at the ticket. Like, I'm just like a vulgar per like I'm, oh. I'm not the same person and I feel like maybe it's taken to, <laughs> to you too yeah. but like how did your involvement with the ticket and with the musers start because and I guess you can answer this question how many people know you from the ticket and not even from the tv job I don't remember exactly how it started to be mm -hmm. honest I think it may have been a PR guy at our station might have been Kukla mm -hmm. or somebody John even Kukla. before him um who wanted to kind of you know, have that relationship evolve between our station and theirs. But then I just got to know those guys. And, and I, I just, I love the station. I mean, it's so unique. It's just so different. There's no other radio station like it. And I, I've always been a student of radio. So I appreciate the way they uh, kind of have their own style. Oh, yeah. And I get more mileage out of, I'm, if I'm on that station 15 days a year, it's a lot. It's usually, you know, 10 to 12. I get more mileage out of that than anything else I do. I'm not going to say necessarily more than TV, but it's, it's close. Isn't that crazy? And it, it shows you, and, and again, preaching to the choir here, how loyal their listeners are. Mm -hmm. The numbers are, are big. I mean, they have a lot of listeners, but those who listen are just there by the channel all the time. So mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing. And I, I just, I admire what those guys do. They make it sound so easy, even though it's so much work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite a skill that they have. I like doing it. it. Um, I'm not, can involved. you imagine doing it every no, day? No, That's what I say every single time I do it, Emily, because I, and, uh, my wife will ask me, you know, you ready to do the ticket this week? Like if I'm filling in for a week and I'm just, I, I'm in agony because I'm like, I, I, how am I going to, I'm going to be you exposed. You feel like everything you do. Yeah. yeah has to I, be what like, what if I don't know this? What if I don't know that? You can't have an average day. Yeah. And it's just a, an open slate for, if you're doing the morning, four and a half hours. God, it's so long. And so what I really love is, and Kat is so good to me, Jeff Catlin, the program director, when he'll just bring me in for a day or two mm -hmm. if, if Greg or George are off and I can just yeah. sit in there. Isn't that the that, most that's fun? Just, that's just perfect. I so. got to do tickers with them for a few days and it was like, this is great. Like, don't, I don't want to be the host, <laughs> but just yeah. put me in here with these people and we have fun. Speaking of next Friday, I'm three to seven oh, are you? hosting. So okay. if you want to come hang out, <laughs> do a segment or two, yeah. do some Ducey's diary. I okay, mean, maybe, maybe. It's Ty Walker and I, oh, good. Good. That'd we're going to have fun. No, we're going to have fun. But I know what you mean about the anxiety and everything. Yeah. It's like, what am I going to do? And it's, I'm just going to, what if I tank? We but have uh, ticket guys on a lot of uh, Tuesday nights on our show, Ticket Tuesday. Oh, and our invite is. Uh, and is, so is it, uh, oh, you, you've been on. I've been on. And you've been on. I've you never been went on, on together. I have you guys like actually in the studio. But oh, we're yeah. Waiting, we're kidding. waiting for the the go oh, on. Yes. COVID. Well, when it happens, COVID we're there. still. Absolutely. Good. It'll be a lot yeah. of fun. We'll just Definitely. show up one night, even if it's yeah. oh, cool. not, you know. <laughs> hey, we're right here. Chardonnay. Here we are. Brought a bottle of wine. It's <laughs> uh, funny. So I wanted to ask, so you talked about that early beginnings of the relationship between the Musers and Ducey. Were you responsible for the introduction of Junior Miller and Natalie Solis? No, I was not. I, don't, I don't know how that, uh, that occurred. I'd love to take credit for it because yeah. they're, they're two of my, uh, my favorite people and now they uh, have a, a little one uh, as so well. So it, it's funny you mentioned Craig though. I was doing the Toys for Tots thing uh, this morning, and he mocks. He 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 claims that he has tots for tots. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> tater tots oh, for I children love tater during tots. Christmas time. Yeah. You know? like, so I texted him for my live shot this morning. I said, "Thanks for ruining this for me." You know? <laughs> but no, I, mean, I, I was not the matchmaker there. Okay, no. I was curious because I didn't even know, and I've listened to the ticket since I got here, and I didn't never know that that's who he ended up. He, who he married. And so when he was having a, a, when he announced they were having a baby, I had no idea it was her. She's adorable. Yeah. I didn't mm. know that they were together for until you told me maybe like almost two years into me being here or something like that. Yeah. How many years have you been here now? Three coming up in March. Okay. Almost. What's years. the date? 
No. You remember? Anniversary. Anniversary. Yeah, because mine's the seventh. Yeah, something like that. I'll be 28 years. You've been here how long? Yes, (laughs) sir. Oh, Oh, gosh. Bless your heart. You you only got some cash you have to do. You'll never catch up. He's going to keep doing that to you forever. You'll never have a response. I'll never compete. I just got to stay in my lane and be your little sidekick. Oh, little sidekick. More and more. I'm hearing when I'm out, you know, at various events. Oh, stop. Asking about Sam. Kind of not really caring about the old Deucemeister that much anymore. It's just a matter. Matter of time. It's just a matter. It's just a matter of time. Um, this might be a good time for me too, real quick. Out. We're talking about careers and changes. If you are interested in something different, check out Next Step Recruiting. Next Step Recruiting places direct hire contract and contract to hire candidates in various industries, including IT, finance, and accounting, human resources, and administrative. They are good friends to us here on the Mom Game, and they want our audience of not just moms, moms, dads, anybody that may be looking for something different to check them out. They have three offices in Dallas, Fort Worth, and Austin, supporting over 250 small to Fortune 100 companies across the U.S. That is legit. Next Step Recruiting is continuing to grow and expand into new markets, too. So right now is the opportunity to join this dynamic team from any of our listening areas. They operate on a 100% remote basis which is amazing. I feel like nowadays, if anybody's looking for a job, they're like, "Uh, can I work remotely? Because that's what people do now. And that's what I'm accustomed to. And I don't want to get out of my slippers. Um, They are currently hiring for their recruiting and (laughs) now I've got feet on the mind. Currently hiring for their recruiting and business development teams, their website, nsrusa.com. Go check them out. We love Next Step Recruiting. And I know a lot of people, especially around the new year or whatever, like, look, I, I need a change. Do you need, you need to write, write that down? <laughs> NSRUSA.com. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just in case. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, really trying to yeah. kick you out the door. I'm totally I'm kidding. kidding. <laughs> um, okay, so obviously. You're lucky you still have a job, man. <laughs> Can't believe they didn't she shove did. your ass out the door. One Thanks. of the things I love the most about Emily is that she is. Very real and very blunt, and I've come I to respect it. that. You both are, though. I, we both, yeah. Uh, well, we, yeah, we, right? I, I feel like, I'm, you know, you're, you're pulling I feel Julie like I'm pulling more. it out of her. Yeah. But I feel like, too, she's teaching me also, too, like, don't be so aggressive sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're scaring I'm, me. We, we help each other in different ways. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to help like her her stress level, like you know. So and, aggressive. And she helps my house organization. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you guys been friends for? Oh, <laughs> over ten years. Yeah, I mean, we I met see. each other, but we weren't like super tight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we knew each other when Julie was an intern at uh, Fox Sports Southwest, and then mm-hmm. stayed in touch. And then, um, when, then she had this idea for this, and I yeah. said, absolutely not. <laughs> I don't need another. I don't need another, another thing. thing. <laughs> and she was very convincing, and she's the nicest human. So it's hard to tell her no. Yeah. Um, and then. You know, if you, you were could tell me no, I could, t- I can tell you no, I can tell you no, no now easier than I yeah. could then. Um, but she's just so nice and she was so passionate about this. And I really just would feel like a total asshole if I said no. And so I gave it a try. And now, you know, almost two years later, it was a, so basically a like she wasn't asking for a co-host. I was not. <laughs> 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 we see who the dominants are here in these relationships and they want everybody to know. Yeah. I, know. I was forced into this shit. If I was going to do it with anyone, it definitely would would have been Julie. So anyway, and now I look back, we have Sam's asking, I think in part, because we are going to perhaps be debuting a a podcast. (laughs) Maybe a little something coming. Oh, really? Exciting. And you know, if you, if you do, I will say it will help with your on air chemistry so much Mm -hmm. because this is such a relaxed environment. Yeah. I would advise that you pour a glass of wine or maybe a little cocktail and just that makes every, it. because that's what we did religiously in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I think it just, it's not like we were getting hammered. We literally had a glass and a half of wine yeah. each, uh, yeah, you couple, know, it, it, couple it, of gummies. it really yeah. couple of gummies. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. What would be your biggest um, piece of advice? And just, that I would, I would say like, whatever it's going to take for you to loosen up a little bit, whether it's like playing a game or doing a get to know you game or something. I mean, it doesn't, I, don't, I hate to be like, drink alcohol. Um, but if, if you tend to get a little looser with, with a glass of wine, yeah. and I wish we had drops on this show. <laughs> <laughs> One 
one of our daily little rituals last Christmas, I got Mike a positivity calendar. Okay. Sometimes he's up here and sometimes Mike, he's how did here. you, were you excited for sometimes that? Sometimes I'm here, sometimes <laughs> I'm way down here. So, you know, every day we read the quote and we found that now towards the end of the year, these quotes have been taking a, a hard turn. Like, <laughs> Whoever wrote dark, these things was having a bad corner. year. They, so need, it's like, they need a, a positivity is calendar. Is there a moral to this? What is right. it? It's just like, sometimes life is bad, sometimes it's horrible. What kind of <laughs> message is that? <laughs> they were writing it probably during COVID. They were in yeah. quarantine. Yes. And they were not happy with the world. So I'll be over on my side of the office. Sam's over on hers. And I'll start a conversation. I'll just start to say something. And I'll really like think he's I'm going just, into a conversation. I'll say, you know, Sam, uh, quite often controversy at work can turn into, you know, then I'll go into the whole thing. I'll try to mix in the sayings throughout the day. Yeah. Um, I would say, though, that... Yes, wine helps, but honestly, once like y'all are professionals, once you have those barriers taken away, like being on TV and the time right. limits and having to get to commercial break mm -hmm. and make sure you don't say this and make sure you don't say that, um, it's a beautiful thing and it'll just happen. It'll just happen organically and naturally and it's so much fun and it's just so fun to get to be yourself, talk about what you want to talk about. Yeah. Um, and, and it just churns. Like the show for M and I now, it's like that's, I tell people, I'm like, this is the easy part. The hard part is like, because we created a business out of it. So it's like the business side of it yep. that I'm trying to, you know, get used to. But podcasts are just fun. And that's a lot of what people want to hear now is they want real. Um, and they want something that they can carry around on their phone and listen to when they're driving or, or walking the dog or whatever. It fits their life rather than their life having to fit your time slot or whatever. Yes. But that being said... Mm. I think there's still a lot of people that watch, you know, yeah, well, the sports at night. Well, it's funny because I think the two could really mesh in some ways. As I sit here doing this show right now, yeah, yeah. I think, why couldn't this be our TV show? I know. You Sometimes know I mean? it's so true because we all, some of our best conversations, and I'm sure you guys feel this too, happen when we're just in the office just talking about the most random stuff, but it's yeah. funny, you yeah. know? <laughs> well, and that's why we, a yep. lot of times will be like, save it. That's why we don't like, you know, plan a whole lot. Cause I'm like, just save it. Or, or, or I'll send her a text and be like, Hey, uh, I paid a Sasquatch to scare my kids this weekend. You know, let's look, we should talk about it. Or, you know, I, I just had a meltdown about whatever, you know, whatever. Remember to ask me the fly fishing story, which I yes. still need to hear. So things oh, like that. Yeah, yeah. She'll like, We're she'll send me it. Bullet points, you yes. know, throughout the day. But I think a challenge, too, is making sure that there's some structure in it still. And it's not just like, tell me about your night last night. You know, right. like we, we want it to be professional. We want to keep it structured and not too much of us just talking about our lives. But there's a lot of that yeah. mixed in. I mean, it's like with that said, here's a radio. funny story I would tell if I were doing this. Our show you, today, you tell. the mic is yours. I would I would say, you know, it's funny. Last night I was going to just walk two blocks to get a salad in between yeah. shows and and uh, to a place where I, I go quite often. But Sam said, no, there's this other place <laughs> up off of uh, Central that you need to go. And uh, you'll you'll oh, enjoy wow. it. It's fresher stuff. It's good. So I said, uh -huh. I had some time. So I, I zipped up 75, you know, at 630 at night, which isn't uh -oh. exactly zipping. No. I get my salad. I'm driving back. And I, I get off with 75 and onto Ross and make a right there on the red and... I'll be damned if a, a motorcycle uh, oh, officer no. didn't pull up behind me and say, you know, that's a no right turn on red oh, there, no. sir. You ask, you know, about being famous and all that. So yeah, I'm thinking, oh, I'll, I'll probably be fine. <laughs> I knew I was in trouble when he asked, if, is that last name Ducci? What is that? <laughs> he just didn't say Ducci. But, like, are you related to Ben DiNucci? So, <laughs> So anyway, it was, an, it was an expensive salad, everybody. And was it good, I have though? my co-host to thank for it. Was it good? I it like how good. you had that to, was so good. You, you were speeding, and you've no. managed to... <laughs> she wasn't even right speeding. On red. <laughs> oh, right on red. It was red. this BS, you you no right on red oh, thing. I stopped. And you managed to blame Sam for you breaking the law, because, because yeah. she just wanted to help you find a nice salad at a different... We don't need to break it down like that. I'm just trying to play therapist here. That, that hasn't worked so yeah. far. It's not going to no, work. No, I, I love y'all's y'all's well, relationship I, though. You're back. And I forth. know, and I think a podcast will do. I think it will. I think it'll translate. I think it'll translate to what you see on the air for sure. Um, what there's you just, see. 
with Ducey. But you're right. I think it will help just the on it, just even helping us be more relaxed. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That pause? Like last <laughs> night when we were on the set, words just, you know, the day where days where just words are not coming out of your, I had yeah. one of those days. Like I literally just could not, not fumble through a sentence. And yeah. I was like, you know what, Sam? Like it happens. Like on there, it's like, you know, what yeah. do you say? Something like, not every day needs to be perfect. Well, right. And I, I don't think people <laughs> care that much if you just mess get through up, it. You know? Just get through like, it. I said something like, not everybody can be as smooth as I am. Oh, yeah. like that, I don't know. <laughs> but you had true. it in your mind last night. I really From did. the first syllable that came out of your mouth that it was going to be a rough night. I d- well, I did. And then I was just like, oh, this is not Oh, once you stumble night. once, yeah, though, it's, it's, it's easy oh, to it keep stumbling in yeah. radio just, or TV yeah. or reading live spots. Spirals. Yeah. Or whatever. I had one just a minute ago. Yeah. And I found I was like, you're we're, you're, we're going to have to do something about this. Like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. So we're going to need to do something it about happens. this. It happens. Um, okay, so y'all talk sports. Your whole show is about sports. We like to talk about sports here. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to have sports talk that's not generic sports talk. Though. I know. I've got one that's my favorite. What? First DFW team to win a championship. Okay. Bring it. Well, we've, talked, we've, done this, we've done this as a segment. First DFW uh, pro team? Right. Now, yeah, from, from here on. From oh, what just, will be? From yes. here, it's not a trivia quiz. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, I'm like uh, Dallas. Uh, listen, I, don't, I, I don't do trivia. <laughs> just, <laughs> just so you know, uh, I can't even Google. I love shit. that question though. <laughs> can't um, even Google shit. Which will be the next of the big four to win a championship? You got star. If you, okay, if you're not familiar, we've got the stars in hockey. Thank you. We've got the Cowboys in football, <laughs> Mavericks in basketball, <laughs> and the Rangers in baseball. She gave you a cheat sheet. I would have said the Rangers were laughable until about a week and a half ago. I know, right? I might want to get some pitching, but I just heard Norm say that the Rangers, uh, like Major League Baseball in general, spent $1.5 billion roughly on free agency, and the Rangers spent a third of that. It's crazy. So amazing and so necessary. It needed to happen. And I don't think they're done. Honestly, I don't think they're done. If we can ever, you know, end a lockout, it'll be amazing. I, I would say it comes down to either the Cowboys or the Stars right now. I still don't think the Mavs are quite there. I mean, Luke is amazing, but I don't know that the complimentary pieces are there. Uh, I'm not as high on the Cowboys as I was earlier in the season, obviously, but if you had to pin me down, and I sure wish somebody would, I think uh, <laughs> it um, would be the Cowboys. Oh, man, the one-liners just keep coming, yeah. Deuce. You're on fire. It would be the he Cowboys is. right now. He is on fire. On I would fire. probably say the Stars and Cowboys. I okay. mean, uh, it's funny because I grew up a Cowboys fan from Boston, which is the weirdest thing. People are, how? And I'm like, my dad yeah, yeah. grew up watching Roger Staubach, and so they were always on TV, so I just grew up watching them. But I think it's funny with the Stars, and Julie, you know more about this than me. It seems like out of all the fan bases, the Stars are the team that make that can make everyone the happiest. Like, even if they're not doing well, people don't come at them the way they do the Cowboys or the Mavs or even the Rangers, you know, for the longest, it's like, okay, now we can talk about them maybe being relevant again, that type of thing. Um, and I think people are like impartial to the stars unless they're winning. Then they're like, Oh hell yeah. I'm a stars fan. Otherwise they're like, what? Yeah, exactly. So maybe that's kind of what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So stars. I would probably say stars Cowboys. Yeah. One a one B. I feel like those are our two best options at this point in now, time. I don't, I, I don't think say, either other team could be a candidate. If, if Chris Stapp's Porzingis could just stay healthy for a long enough period of time to where we could actually evaluate this Mavs team with him and Luca right. playing at a high level. The team that it's supposed to be on paper. I might change my mind a little bit. But, you know, when you have Luca as part of your franchise, I mean, you can win a lot of games, but he definitely needs some help. What do y'all think of Jason Kidd so far? I, jury is very much out. I mean, you know, he's, I think it was high time to move beyond Carlisle. I mean, I was totally on board with that. And um, I just don't know how it's going to, it's all going to come down to how he and, and Luca are able to continue to communicate. And I could see that being a problem at some point because they're both really strong headed guys. I mean, yeah. Luca <laughs> likes to do things a certain way and is a very emotional player in much the same way that kid was and, and and as a coach has a certain type of discipline that he wants so I don't know how that's going to work out but it's basically unless they improve their roster it's it's not really going to matter for Jason Kidd I don't think but oh. at, at this at this point um I, I don't really really know that you can form much of an opinion on how he's yeah done. I mean I don't think he's blowing anybody away and no. could we say that people thought that you know like oh he's going to come in and everything's going to look different game one you yeah know? Right. It's not like his track record as a coach would necessarily tell you it's that. Not right. Good. Yeah. I think it's because of his reputation around here and For having sure. 
help lead that championship team. But, you know, I, I wish him well. I, I like him personally. And, yeah. and, and uh, I hope he can you know, make this thing fun again for the Mavs. It's right. always, always I, a good time yeah. when they're, when they're rocking. And I think he's changed a lot in the last few years and maybe just people aren't recognizing that. Yeah. Mm. Maybe not. Um, it was just <laughs> totally a shot at me. <laughs> no, I'm like, no, it wasn't. It was. No, it we got wasn't. an, we got an argument about this a couple of, a couple of weeks ago about how, no, it was a Gordo line from the ticket. Oh. I've changed a lot in the last few years and people aren't recognizing yeah. that. Oh. But nobody got I it. thought you were taking a shot at me because I was saying how I thought Jason Kidd's strategy was to like say stuff in the media and he never really backed down from things as a player. When I covered him like that was, I just feel like there was a reason why, the front office knew knew that personality going into this and still decided to hire him mm. knowing he was going to call Luca out in the media yeah, sure. and knowing full well that was going to happen. Yeah. So I thought I you were, I thought you were giving me the middle no, finger on I that. was just <laughs> quoting something stupid. <laughs> okay. okay. That Gordon Well, but was. I hope you know I came back at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you were ready. Well, was, you were ready, ready to retaliate <laughs> against my ready weird, with my against points. my weird comment that, no, <laughs> that nobody knew what to do with. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think the Mavs are maybe leaving a little bit to be desired at this point early on in the season and a lot of room to change direction, though. Cowboys, uh, we were just talking about, I guess the the topic right now is Dak, and is Dak the same Dak that he was to start uh, or pre-injury and even before uh, early on in the season when the team was winning games, playing so well. Do y'all notice anything different about him right now? Is he hesitant? Is he a little less accurate? Should we be worrying? You know, we, we talked about the offense last night on our show, and, and I think I think Dak's fine. I mean, the Denver game was, you know, was horrible. Um, I, I think he's, by and large, the Dak that's the good Dak. I think this running game being so um, out of sorts is, is the problem with this offense right now. And yeah. one doesn't work. With, without the and other. maybe he's feeling more pressure because of it. Like he's got to do more I on, think, on his end because he can't hand the ball off to Zeke and ask him to do anything. That's maybe part of it. And I, you know, I think Kellen Moore hasn't been great the last three or four weeks for the most part, uh, to be honest, and just the way that, that he's put the game plan together. Uh, I know a lot of people have been trying to see, uh, you know, injury after effects in Dak's yeah. game and maybe the way he's throwing the ball. I don't necessarily, necessarily see that as he is, Totally accurate as he seemed to be early in the year. Maybe not, but just so many things go into it when you're talking about football. Right. Everything has to work for everything and, else to work. Right, and that's an easy place to pinpoint, like, was Dak okay? Yeah. You know, well, what about all these other things that are probably contributing to what you're seeing with Dak? So I like that answer because I'm I'm optimistic person all the time, and I was really excited at the start of this Cowboys season. Like, finally, this is the team. This is the team that can do it. I do think that like Dak has talked about the last couple of weeks that he's getting too greedy. Like he's, he wants the big play where he just needs to kind of settle yep. down and settle in. But I do think the fact that they, and I'm not using injuries as an excuse, but like when he didn't have CD lamb and Mark, when you don't have your top two wide receivers yeah. playing and they're out and then they come back, the rhythm is going to be off a little bit. And like yeah. to your point, the run game's been off. Zeke isn't healthy. So that balance that they're so used to having, it's not there right now. Right. So I don't think it's something that they can't overcome what do they have? They still have, they're up two games in the NFCs. That's right, right? That is right. Yeah. 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 So, but it could get real interesting. So, I mean, you want to be playing your best at the end, but um, it's not like I'm like, oh, this team's in trouble yet. I don't think anyone should yeah. right. as far to say that. Make the playoffs, things, right? See what happens. Things yeah. are so much more fun when the local teams are winning. It makes mm -hmm. all yeah. of our jobs so much easier. Um, well, thank you guys so much for coming. And how did y'all like our ratio of like bullshit, 90%, 10% it. sports talk? Yeah, I felt like the sports was just kind of obligatory was, here at the yeah. end. I like, like uh, oh, yeah. yeah, you guys are yeah, sports catchers. Yeah, who's so who's going to be the sports. next team to win a championship? Right. Okay, good. You ladies are <laughs> We can cross that off the list. Sports us. talk. Yes. That's right. Yeah. This is great. No, we're inspired now, Mike. Uh, no, I like it. Emily I like and Julie, it a lot. you've inspired us from this. Okay. Well, good. Yes. We're glad yeah. that we're glad that y'all said yes to our invitation. Our first episode in the car right yeah, after that. Right. Like, we are feeling the juices right now. We are. Yeah. Well, and I know you guys know the pilot. I know you guys know the way we end, especially you do see all the shows. I know you know how we end it. So that's what we're going to do right now. Absolutely. Let's go. Yeah, you, guys, you, you, guys, you guys get it going. We're I'm the moms. We're the moms. We're the moms. Like, I'm watching your 22 minutes.
this and you're watching our show every week. I will right? now. I, wish I will now. All right. You look at your camera. Yours is right there. <laughs> Flash up your peace signs and <laughs> oh, say mom game out. It's oh, cheesy as hell. my nails. My nails need to be done. I had to rip them all off. Your, so. oh, I, think, I think they're looking pretty hot. <laughs> it's real. It's super hand, cheesy. Hand fetish. It's super cheesy. What do we say? But what do we do? It's look at your camera. Mom game out. On okay. the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> mom, mom game, game out. 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 I like Ducey's song better. <laughs> mom we're, game, mom game. We're That's a different moms. song before. We're the moms. We're the mama, mama. <laughs> <laughs>